I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All the Mods Volcano Block. Now, today is going to be a rather crazy episode because we are going to be getting into some more R stuff, and hopefully, today, getting our first bit of All the Modium and going into a new dimension. But before we do all of that, well, I need to get my sieving operation back up and running. So I was coming up with some interesting ideas. I was trying to figure out what is a nice compact way of setting these machines up. And I think this is going to work perfect. Uh, so down here will be an ender chest that's going to feed to this ender chest. And on top, I'm going to use a node. Uh, now I'm going to stack these vertically and change them with a hammer in order to get them to all lay correctly. So of course, that means I need to break all of these. Better turn that on so I don't lose one in lava. Uh, but yes, I'm going to have to get all of my hammers set up, and this should be just enough. We'll have gravel sieve, sand, and dust, and netherrack set up here, as this is the netherrack operation. I just simply need to shift right-click on the bottom to make sure to set all of the sides of all of these, as I slowly but surely add more and more. Look at that. And this, was, this side gets three just like that. Now, I need to get lava to this system, so I'm going to be using the hose pulley here, uh, and then we're going to be using an ender tank. Uh, so it works exactly the same way as an ender chest, uh, but I'm going to set it up on the white, white, white channel for right now, and I think that'll be that'll be fine. We can set up water. Usually, I like to have either water or lava on the white, 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 which is like a, the basic one, um, but uh, later on, we can, of course, make like blue. Uh, blue is really easy to make, so we could probably make that the water channel, whereas orange, not so easy to obtain orange dye. Uh, yes, so I need a way to still pull out of here to fill this tank, because by default, me just putting this on here is not going to do it. So the pipe with a upgrade is probably going to be the best bet. Uh, it's not the prettiest looking thing in the world. And I think I'm just going to use an advanced pipe upgrade for now uh, to get this working. So we'll place it down and then I just need to pipe wrench it. And I always have my stuff put away. <laughs> but there we go. So there we, we, we can't actually see the uh, the like uh, border because of the shape of the uh, uh, the hose pulley, but it is extracting and there it goes. So I should be able to now take this and place it up top here and this will actually export uh, on its own on top of an inventory. All you have to do is just rotate this and that'll put it into export mode and it'll export to the inventory below it. Uh, but of course we are going to need some more pipes to send the lava to the sides. And I don't even think we're going to need to put upgrades on this because uh, this should be plenty fast enough once we start giving it power. Of course, this is going to need the items going. And I think everything is done. And all we have to do now is, of course, put the cobble gins on top of these three and then route the power and then put my ender chest down here. And we're going to use laser IO to pull from all of these barrels. So for the laser IO with the ender chest on the bottom, uh, it's just going to simply be all of the sides. So north, west, east, and south are going to need an extract item card. And then the down is going to need an insert card. So we just need to drag that into here. And now technically it's ready to go. Of course, I do want to upgrade these as we go along because I'm sure these are going to produce probably more than uh, the eight every second that it, it is going to be sending. So we'll see how that runs. And of course, once we get these fully upgraded, which that, yeah, then we're definitely going to encounter it because these go pretty fast once they're fully upgraded with like the max upgrade cards. Now, the only other part is going to be energy pipe throughout the center going all the way to this. And now that I see this, I realize this might be a problem because I won't be able to power this particular basin, which means I will probably end up moving it over here. So there we go. It's all moved, set up, should be perfect. We'll put our point on here and then make sure to give this all power. And then, of course, that's definitely going to need an upgrade on it. So I will put uh, an ultimate. You know what? I probably don't need an ultimate. We'll just use an advance. That should be plenty of power for now. If we need more later on, more than the 65,000 that this can provide, we'll go from there. But I don't think we're going to need it. Now, I went ahead and removed the middle drying basin. We'll see how that's going to work. Uh, this might actually be enough to, to keep this going nonstop with no problem. But yeah, we just need to get our cobble gins on here and uh, see how this goes, right? Cobble gin. There's six of them we have that are all in the basic tier. 
As soon as I put these on, it's going to start generating resources. Um, I definitely don't want those connected. There we go. And this one. And last but not least, that one. And then we just need to get the upgrades in these. And these bad boys are going to start kicking off. And should be working. This should already be working, as you can see. And then I got to get the meshes in. So now that all this is running, things are probably going to start to get a little bit out of hand over here at uh, our system because I know I don't have those things automatically routing. So you can see all of this is going to start building up all the pieces, everything. I need to get drawers set up for this immediately. Uh, otherwise, it's going to clog up our mob farm. And of course, we're going to end up with a lot of issues there if we don't deal with this. Um, so I might as well start getting all of the drawers placed in because that's what's next. Uh, I need to get a drawer set up for each of these items and pieces uh, and all of that fun stuff that all of this produces. So now I wanted to also temporarily get my smelter set back up. And so to do that, I just have attached to my controller. Of course, I'm going to set this up differently later on, but uh, I want to have it back up and running while we work on other things. And so, of course, I set up my crafters again and I'm pulling out of the controller and it is feeding all of the items into here, as you can see. And then those then get pulled out and go into my smelter and then get smelted up and then that gets pulled back out. The only thing I need to do is just add some uh, pipe upgrades to get them going faster. And uh, yeah, we're looking pretty good. Now that all that boring stuff is out of the way, let's get into the fun part of today's episode. And that is going to be generating these islands. Now, these islands seem pretty darn cool from the descriptions that you see right here. And so this will be very interesting, making all of these. Uh, one apparently even has an end portal on it. And I want to make each one of these end islands or these islands that we can generate. And I want to do that uh, generating it outside of our structures here. Um, and uh, I don't want to do it directly on the surface of the lava. I kind of want to have it floating a little bit. Uh, but I also want it lower, I think, than our basic platforms here. So setting up these islands is going to be quite the interesting process. Uh, it does require a ritual. And we just simply craft these and then place the source jars required for it around it. And it should generate the island. Now, since there's tons of islands, I think what I'm going to do is just find the center point uh, that is in relation to this area here. Um, and as if we were to build another one of these outside. And I want to find the center. And that center is right here, which uh, this pole platform is 21 by 21. Um, and so this is 12 blocks off of the edge, meaning this is going to be 11 blocks and 11. The 11th block makes the center point. And that's where I want to go. Uh, but that makes me wonder because some of these islands say uh, that we are going to need at least 14 blocks from any other block to be performed. So... Maybe this needs to go further out. So for this, I decided instead to go out technically two full platforms and then do the middle of that platform. Uh, and I'm also using the copy paste gadget to make this really easy on myself. And this will allow me to simply paste in the new area. All we need is the concrete. Why, do, why am I using concrete? <laughs> I have no idea. This is just temporary blocks that we're gonna use to fully support the islands that are going to go on top of these. So I have all of these set up and I am super excited. I want to see what this does. So the first one is Conjure Island Flourishing. Uh, creates an island of flourishing archwood, moss, glowberries, and bamboo. Converts the area into a mangrove swamp and requires a full jar of source to begin. Note, this ritual should be performed at least 14 blocks away from any other block in which we are perfectly in our rights and have everything set up and ready to go. So let's get some flight because I don't think our flight reaches fully out here. But what I'm going to do is place this down and then I'm going to put a single source jar next to it. Stand on that and then put this in and then right click to activate. Oh, wow. How big is the island? Oh, wow, these are huge. I didn't know it was going to be this, this massive. Oh, my God. It's so much. Okay, so these islands are going to be intersecting, it does appear, once this is all fully up and running. Wow. They are definitely going to blend into each other. 
This is nutty. It's so cool, though. What is good? What did I do? What did I just make? It looks like it does, like, delete the blocks. Like, it replaces the blocks. But for this, this thing is so neat. And there it is. It's done. It used an entire source jar for that. Oh, it doesn't replace the blocks. Oh, that'll be interesting. So that means when I generate this island, it is not going to overlap these blocks. Um, so it should just create an intersecting island, meaning I probably want to put the islands uh, and do the middle ones last. Uh, well, it depends, honestly. I just wasn't expecting them to take up this much space. That's... This is a huge area it just took up. Holy smokes. That was more than I was expecting, to, to be fair. Way more. Okay, so that's just that island. Then we have the deep dark and a blazing island. Creates an island of blazing archwood and lava. Uh, converts the area to archwood forest, requiring a full jar of source to begin. Maybe we should push these islands back. So, like, I will, uh, I'm going to take this area and extend it back a little bit. Maybe I can extend it forward. Now that I know how large these are, it does uh, allow me to, I think, yeah, we need to push them back. And uh, I'll put the middle one uh, a lot further back, so that way they're not touching each other. So it looks like there's an island for each wood type, which is kind of cool. Uh, and I did go ahead and get that expanded out, so that's where the island's going to go. But of course, right here uh, is going to be our next one, which I'm just going to go ahead and get the basic island. So this will be like our blazing one. And we can go ahead and get that set up. It seems like these are a lot cheaper than the other ones. There are some that require so much source. These are so satisfying. Also, it does appear like they float. I don't know if you've seen, but it is floating technically off the ground. Let's see, can I place this on here? Okay, that's fine. And this is going to be the vexing version. Yes, yes, yes. Oh boy. I almost wonder, I should probably get rid of uh, these outside areas. This is so cool watching this just expand. It's so satisfying. Yeah, these outer areas, this will be like barely enough. I think they'll probably be touching the outer edge. Whoa! The fact that it changes the whole biome is so cool. And they give you different resources in every area. And yeah, the biome changes. So no longer are we in a desert here. We're actually in an archwood forest. Oh, these are so cool. Wow. And this has lava and everything here. And of course, the next one, this is the cascading. And there's even one apparently for villagers. Like, oh man, this is where like getting your source automated is so worth it. Oh, it does allow water to spill out. This one has coral. And it's like a mini ocean biome, a warm ocean biome. What? This is straight up an ocean biome. That is awesome. We could use this for like fishing and stuff. No way. This thing is so cool. Oh man, I got to give it to ours. This is, this is fantastic. All right. And this is the last one of the main islands. Uh, so I'll put another jar. Let's activate this one. And this is going to be the vexing one, which, uh, I don't remember exactly what this says it's going to do. Mushroom Island. So this is going to be like a good old mushroom field. You know, the ones where mobs don't spawn on it, like hostile mobs. And we'll have like mushroom cows probably that can spawn on here. That's, that's super nifty. And we should have, yeah, there'll be mycelium. What even? Oh, this is just so cool. Oh, and cobwebs and source berries. So if you're wondering how to get source berries, well, of course, you can get mana without source berries, but source berries, you can harvest them this way. Look at that. Also, this is probably the only way that you can get this fruit here from ours. And that's that's super cool. Now, I think it's time to get onto the more advanced islands. And, uh, well, one can spawn an, uh, an end portal. One can spawn, like, the ability for you to fight the warden and a deep dark biome. That's going to be pretty cool. So now the deep dark one is the one that should be able to spawn the warden. And uh, that's the one that I think is going to be the most scary. I'm going to place it, though, right here. 
and then break this block underneath. That way we don't have any interruptions. Place our source jar and then activate this. Oh boy. And yes, these are so close to each other. Oh, they're perfect. And this is so cool to watch. Now, I, I don't want to... I want to creep up on this because I don't want to just summon the warden. Because these things... Yeah, there's going to be some nasty stuff that can potentially spawn here. And I want to be careful. Oh, boy. There's the skulk. Oh, no. Last but not least, I think the sensors and the shriekers. Oh, yes. Let's ease our way over here and we'll sneak through this so we don't summon the warden just yet. Yep, and I'm going to bounce and hopefully get back before my flight runs out, which it was about to run out. Woo! So that island right there is how we would get the warden to spawn. And you can see there's mobs already spawning on it. Oh my goodness, that is... That is horrifying. Now I know there's an end cake, but this is pretty darn cool. This is an end portal that's supposed to be able to spawn. And so we'll set it up the same way, like so. And we just simply use a single jar of source, activate it, and it is going to spawn an end portal. Oh wow, it spawns it in this direction? That's interesting. It just straight up spawns like the the in portal box. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Um, let's go refresh our timer. That's kind of cool. And so it put it in here, and we just have oh, it even 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 comes with a silver fish spawner. Oh no, but we have in portal frames, which are unbreakable which means we'll never be able to move these blocks now they are forever in our world i think i don't know if anything can move them now believe it or not there are still several more islands to take a look at and i want to do the village conjure which uh i'm going to put out here because i don't know how large this is going to be because it doesn't say how large this is so i want this to be as far away for, uh, as possible from everything because this is probably the the most horrifying uh, because I hope it's not like the size of a village. Looks like it's just going to be a normal island. Hopefully 14 blocks. Yep, it seems to be about the same size, so the 14. This is from a different mod, by the way. Um, this also has a starter island, but that starter island is, uh, disabled. You can't craft it. So this is from that. And apparently this is supposed to summon a village with villagers and everything. So I've, it's not done entities yet. So I'm going to be curious how it does and handles entities. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. It's got like nice little hutches and everything. What? Even some mage blocks. Oh, this is pretty sick. This is kind of, this is adorable looking. And there's the villagers. What? This is so cool. I don't even like... Ours has just grown into this mod that is just beyond amazing, I think. Like, this is such a cool mod. Now, we still have more islands, and uh, I think over here, what I'll do is I'll put one here. This is going to be the planes, and we can augment these and actually make them larger. These two can be augmented, it looks like, uh, but I don't really want to augment them. They're going to be, uh, by default, a seven radius, which is going to end up being like the same size island as this. Um, and so let's do the planes first. And this one apparently makes a desert, even though we already have a desert. So that's a little less practical. But this is going to convert into a planes biome, which is just a, a normal, normal overworld world biome. And this said a seven, it did say a seven radius. So it should end up being the same size as this island. Okay, interesting. It is a little bit different. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, okay. Uh, and you can make these larger by adding in the crystals to the, the brazier and it goes up uh, one in diameter for each one. So you can make this kind of large. I wonder if there's like a max size. You could probably just create an entire landmass of just free dirt this way. Uh, and it doesn't use as much source. It didn't use an entire source jar. That's kind of cool. 
I think over here I'll do the desert one. Oh, cool. So this one places down, uh, looks like sandstone on the bottom to hold up the sand and then places sand. Pretty cool. Now, of course, last but not least in this pack is the geode. So I'm going to place the geode back here. And this should just make a normal geode from what it says in the description. Uh, and so that'll give us access to amethyst, even though we already have it. But it should make one. This would be really cool in a pack that, you know, let's say doesn't have access to this stuff. Is it going to put us right inside? It is. It's just straight up making a good old fashioned geode. Oh, this is cool because this gives us budding blocks. Budding amethyst. And there it is. It produced a geode, that's for darn sure. And let's take this. I have a little bit of flight left. Look at that. What even? Oh, these this is so cool. Now we have all these islands and stuff that we can sell, set up teleportation locations for. Now at this point, I kind of want to take on the warden and see if I can. So I just re-enchanted with everything having protection on it. I don't, unfortunately don't have like max protection, but I do have protection on everything. Uh, and that should make us a little bit tankier. Um, and uh, I'm also going to use this sword, I think. And I'm going to use some apples. Uh, so there are special apples in here that we can actually craft. And I'm kind of curious, for example, the relic apple, which I think can give us extra hearts if we eat. And it gives us strength to resistance and haste. However, we won't have regeneration. Regeneration is really important. Is there more apples than just that? Okay, so there's diamond and emerald apples as well. I don't know what each of these do, but I'll definitely take a bite out of both of them to see. Maybe we can just eat all of the apples. Okay, that give us that gives us regeneration. So we have regeneration three. Oh, okay. So all of those apples are a hundred percent apples that we need to consume. I'm going to take a couple of these. I don't think the warden is going to take too much to fight, especially since we'll have flight. Um, and then let's see if we can make the relic apple from the bobbles mod. So we'll have all of these apples and all of this combined that lasts a little while, fire resistance and everything. I might be in for it, um, but let's see if we can get this guy to spawn. So we just need to make noise, right? And eventually these shriekers should work. Okay, there they went. That activated. Come on. Eventually, one should spawn. I don't know if we have to do other things to get these to activate. This is all kind of new to me. Should we move them all closer? Come on, Warden! I'm not sure how all of this works. Maybe I should move them? These are the skulk sensors. Let's move them a little bit closer. But they're not. There it goes. There it goes. Okay. So that should summon a warden. Oh boy. And it's getting dark. I'll eat the apples. Turn our magnet on. Oh boy. And here we go with the warden. Spawn, man. Spawn! No, it didn't spawn? I think it was tempting. It tempted it a little bit. I don't think this guy can break blocks, can it? I've never done this. Okay, a shrieker just went off. But I don't know if that means it's spawning. But it did just go off. Come on now. It's still not spawning one. Okay, it just made some sounds. It's doing it again. I'm just like walking over it this time. Ah, there we go. Yes. Now we should be good. Let's put this guy in his place. 500 damage? Yeah, flying is definitely going to be a must here. Holy smokes. 
But we should be able to kill him. Cheesing him by standing is going to be necessary. Holy smokes. And we have resistances out the wazoo. Okay. And 30 health. And he's down. Whoo! We just killed the warden. And my goodness. <laughs> it all begins from this point forward, though. Oh, man. Because this right here allows us to gain access to a new dimension. That's right. Now we have access technically to a new dimension. If we go here, I don't know why there's a Plight Energistics that just opened up. Uh, but if we go over here into our bounty board, we can now accept the Warden quest, get ourselves some Aldemodium, and then we need to take this Aldemodium and we need to use it very, very wisely. Because I think getting Aldemodium any other way is going to be incredibly difficult. Uh, we should be able to turn this into nuggets and then use the nuggets to make ourselves a teleport pad. And this is going to go into the nether and allow us to teleport to the other. Yes, and that's where we're going to be able to mine all the modium and apparently mine vibranium as well. So that is going to open up all kinds of new stuff for us. And I cannot wait. To do that now i think with us having access to a new dimension somewhere that we can actually mine it's pretty cool i love having a sky block where you can still mine and so we're gonna need to focus on a much much better mining tool than a regular pickaxe and i think that will lead us into thermal but that's gonna have to wait until next episode because guys today I am just simply out of time, and I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and I hope you got something out of it. I hope you learned about some new stuff. Of course, I found out about all of these new Ars Islands, and these things are amazing. I'm absolutely in love with them, uh, and I think there's even been a mod pack that was actually made around using these islands in a skyblock with, with, uh, with Ars Nouveau. This is pretty cool. Like, just all this. It's just kind of overwhelming. So many new mods, so many amazing updates to these mods, and I'm absolutely blown away. And I am enjoying it. And I hope you're enjoying it as well, learning along with me. And of course, guys, if you did enjoy, click that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and uh, comment down below which island is your favorite. I would love to hear from you. And uh, of course, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's video. And that amazing thanks is going to go to Typer. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way. Over on the Discord, becoming a beautiful Discord premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. And of course, guys, if that's something you're interested in, be sure to check out the Discord link down in the description below. And of course, guys, I will happily see you in the next episode where we're going to be adventuring, building a better tool and going and exploring that new dimension. So if you're ready for that, click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next episode. And of course, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Bye.